In this video, we're going to talk about the features or commands found within the edit menu of Penta. Now let me open up my Penta program. Now as you can see here, I already have a couple images loaded for my background. I have the palm trees reflection, which is the palm trees in the water, and then the selected one is my boat. I'm going to go to the palm tree one for now to make it active in my layers window. Uh, and here you can see that's the images that's loaded here. All right. To start with, when you look in the edit menu, you have an undo, redo, and they're both bold because I did uh, load up the layers here. So let me first go to my uh, pencil drawing and let me draw something on my image. All right, now I know it's a mess, but if you look here in my history, uh, it put the last thing I did was paintbrush. So when I go to edit and click on undo it moved from paintbrush back to import from the file because that was the last thing I did imported from a file to put in my layers so what you see that where I drew it removed it so it undid the last command that I did or it undid the last thing that I did in my image now if I accidentally if I was going here to look at a feature and I accidentally click the undo you can go back and hit redo and when I do hit the redo watch what happens in my history window when I go back to hit redo it moves down so down here in the history I can move up and down from it so I can go and undo this way or I can redo here but since we're focusing on the commands and features found in the edit menu I'm going to stick mostly with the commands you see here now for most of these except for the palette and that's a sub menu and I'll get to that in a moment each of these commands has shortcut keys but for the sake of the video I'm gonna go with point and click so that you can see what happens and you can immediately see the results on your screen now let make sure that I got the image the background image selected the next one in the list is cut in order to cut something out you have to first select it so I'm gonna take the selection tool and I'm going to come and I'm going to select the tree. You know, there's a little lag there, but as long as you remember where it's at, it will work. I come up here and hit edit. I hit the cut command and the trees is now cut out or, or where I selected is now cut out from the image. So the cut command basically takes the contents where you selected it and places that contents on the clipboard. If I went and paste, I could paste it back into the image or I could create a new image and paste it in the contents that I put on the clipboard. And a clipboard is just a temporary reserve memory where you place that at. All right, here when I go back, uh, now that was cut. I'm gonna go undo because when I copy, uh, it does the same thing but leaves the selected image within the picture. So now let me go back and say copy. Now when you hit copy, you really don't see anything happen to your immediate image here. So I can go and say new for a new image and I can choose what's the uh, default size here. And when I hit paste, I come up here and hit paste. As you can see here, what I copied uh, is paid, placed on that new image. So as you can see here, the original image that I had, which was the palm trees, was a very large image. So as you can see here, when I paste it there, that's exactly the contents which I copied. So I no longer need this one. I'm going to close this one out. It says, do you want to save it? Close without saving. So when you select something, when you hit cut, you can then paste it into a new image or you can paste it somewhere in your original image and when you copy it does the same thing with cut except it leaves the selected part of your image into uh, in your original image now the next one is and I know I kind of skipped some here but the next on the list is copy merged now let me go back to my original uh, overlay which you see here is a boat so I have two images let me uncheck that so you can see the boat this is a transparent background uh, and on the boat now in order to work with an image you first have to make sure it's selected over here in your layers because if I'd be down here and try to select the boat it wouldn't select it and a lot of times that's what I do and I realize why is it not selecting it's because it's not active so I'm going to select the both images at the same time and copy the contents from both at the same time. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I'm going to select and now notice I'm going to go to the boat the top one, my top layer and I'm going to select my boat and it's a little bit of a lag but in just a moment it'll catch up. There it is. Now the key with this next command when I go to say copy merged it's not going to just copy the active layer which is boat it's going to copy the boat along with the layers underneath it so when I hit copy merged all right now I place the contents of the clipboard of the active layer and all the contents in that selected 
layer below. So when I go back to file and hit new, I hit OK. Now I go up here and hit paste. As you can see here, it just didn't copy the boat, which was the top layer. It also copied the layers below. So the copy merged, uh, you don't have to go and merge all the layers and then copy and paste. It functions as that feature alone. So that's a very powerful function the copy merged is. Now I don't need the copy merge except for I can go back and show you. If I go back up here and uncheck, go to the boat, as you can see the boat is one layer. Then I uncheck uh, this one back and uncheck this one and the trees is another layer. However, when I go back to this image, it copied the contents of the selected area from both images. So that's a very powerful feature there. And I'm going to close it and say close without save it. Now the next one I've already used, the paste. That's where I copy and paste into a new location. So when you co copy or cut, you can paste it uh, back into your image or like you saw I brought up a new image you can paste it. Now sometimes you can say paste into a new layer. So since I did hit copy merged as my last command I can now say paste into a new layer. Now you remember new layers are going to be added here. New images will be added to a whole separate image. So if I say paste into new layer when I click this it's going to add me a new layer. So if I uncheck the boat and I uncheck the background as you can see here I now have a new layer that this uh, copy merged occurred. So if I just hit copy and say copy it into a new layer, it will automatically create a new layer and copy the last contents that you selected into that new layer. Now I'm going to go and uncheck this one, recheck this one, this one, and I don't need that copy new layer so I can delete it from my layers uh, window. The next thing, the last merge that I did was the copy merged now the next feature is copy into a new image. Remember this is your new image. This is your new layers. And on my website, if you don't remember parts of the windows, I have an image for you. And I'll bring that up. If you can't remember which is which, this is the layers window. This is the image window. This is your history pane. This is your color palette, your tool palette, and your toolbars. So if you forget, I'll provide a link below. But now watch this right here. The last thing I did was copy merged. And I say paste into a new image it now added a new image rather than a new layer. So this is like I can go back and forth between the two layered I have or my single uh, image that contains both layers. So uh, these work very similar. This one creates a new layer. This one creates a new image and I didn't have to go file new. So let me go ahead and close this one out. Close without saving. The next thing on my list is select all. Now and currently right now I don't even have the boat or anything selected in the image and this might be hard to see while well, I do have up here in the corner. There's a little selection but when I hit the select all it's going to select the entire image putting the dotted line all the way around the image. So when I hit select all you can see it across the top. It's hard to see because of the dark outline. It's across the bottom and it's across the side. So it selected the entire image of the selected image. So when I hit select all, make sure you have the selected layer that you want to select or if I was trying to select all the images for the palm trees, it wouldn't be selected all of those. It's only selecting the whole image of the boat. If I wanted to select all, I'd click on palm trees and go select all. So it selects the entire image of the active image. The next thing is deselect all. So if I accidentally clicked on the select all, I click this and the little dotted lines went away. There's nothing now selected on the active image, which is the boat 2 image. The next one is our delete selection. So let me go back and add a selection. So I can select like, let me go back to the palm trees. I can select where the palm trees were. There's a little lag in it, but as long as you can remember your starting point and ending point. Now I can press the delete key on the keyboard, but since we're using the menu, I can say delete or deselect or delete the selection. So when I do that, it deleted the selective of the active image. So there is my delete the selection. The next one, it says to fill a selection. So as you can see here, the the top color in your color palette, which is your primary color, it will fill it with the primary color. So if I wanted black here, I could go to and then to edit and say fill selection because that's the fill bucket. The fill bucket is like the fill bucket here where I can click here, click the color, click on that and it fills it up. But within the edit menu I can do it all at one time. I can say fill the selection and that selected area where I deleted it out 
would be filled with the color of the primary color. And you might say, well, why would you want to do that? You know, if I've got an image or something, I might want to delete out a little uh, long rectangle and then come in here and type my text. So that's a good feature to have. Let me go back and undo. Uh, let me undo until where there's everything back like it should. All right, now I'm back to my original image of my palm trees. The next one is to invert a selection. So I'm going to go back, create a selection. And it's a little bit laggy here. And it might be because I have so much stuff running in the background. But as you can see, I've got my selection. The invert selection is going to invert the selection as the name implies. What that means is where I have this area selected, when I invert it, everything else will become selected except this area. So if I wanted to uh, unselect a certain object, you know, I'm just using the square and rectangle. I could go and freehand an object, like I outlined the tree, invert my selection, and everything except for the tree will be selected. So let me go to edit and say invert my selection. Now as you can see here, this is a clear box on the palm trees. This is not selected, but everything else is. So that way if I press delete, this area will not be deleted. All the contents around it would be deleted. So if I outlined a tree, say invert the selection, then I hit delete, everything around the tree would be deleted and the tree would remain in the image. Let me go and hit undo. Let me hit undo again. And that got rid of my selection. All right, the next one in the edit menu is the palette submenu. Now this is not a command on itself. I, when I click this, it's not going to do anything. As you can see here, there's an error indicating that there's additional commands in this submenu. Now this is where you can change your palette. This is the default palette and you can uh, create a folder on your system and I went to my documents and I named it Penta and then I said palettes and I've added some additional palettes. Let's say that for example you're working with an image and your your colors that you're using you're sporadically going around or it may not be a color in this list so you have to go and add colors to it. Here's where you can customize your palette according to the image that you're working with and then you can load the palette by hitting open and I'll do that. Uh, I can say open and when I go to my documents, I go to Penta. These are folders that I created. You don't have to use these. I automatically save the default so that way I can change back and forth very quickly. But there's another way that you can do that, that up here. If I want to go to like to sample text that I've created, as you see I did that yesterday when I worked on the website. Now there's two different formats. There's your text formats and GPL formats that you have. Uh, so I'm using the text format. So when I hit open, watch the palette over here on the side. When I hit the sample and I hit open, that now changed. Where there were reds and other colors, there's more blues that's the customized, like the blues that you see in this image here and the blues here. You can go and change all these colors to a custom setting. And I'll make a separate video because that's a video in itself on creating a whole new palette. I'm just showing you these features in this particular video. Now if I go over here, and I can say save as, like if I just created this one, I can go save as, I can put my name here, I can choose whether it'll be a text file which is compatible with paint.net color palettes, or I can uh, use a color palette from GIMP which has the extension GPL, then I can hit save. So you, it allows you to save a palette, so you can have multiple palettes saved according to the image that you're working with. So if you have a large image and you might spend hours working on it, instead of going through here and finding or customizing and keep doing the same thing, or you might be working multiple days, you can create a palette for that particular image. Now the next one on the list is to reset the, the colors uh, to your default colors. So when I hit reset, sometimes when I hit reset, it doesn't automatically reset them. I have to uh, close out the image and then open it back up. Let me try it. It did. Uh, it reset back to the default image. So you see where I had the blues. It, there's two grays there, a light gray and a dark gray, and a red that I had my blues. So when you go to the edit menu and hit reset, re reset, it resets back to the default menu. Now where you got set number of colors. There's three columns and there's 16 colors in a column, meaning there's a total of 48 colors displayed by default. When I come here and say set numbers, 
as you can see, there's 48 colors by default. If I come and put number seven colors, hit OK, watch what's going to happen. There's only going to be seven colors, so there's only going to be one column that has seven colors in them. So when I hit OK, I now have reduced my number of colors on my screen. But if you want to restore them very quickly, go back to Palette, say Restore Your Default, and it's now back to the default settings. So those are the features or commands found within the Edit menu. Uh, these allow Penta to be a very powerful program. Hopefully this helped you understand uh, the features or commands found within the pen to edit menu. Uh, if you ever want to use this as a, a reference material, instead of going back and watching the video, I will provide a link to my website that shows you all the illustrated images and examples of the edit menu. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day.